Hey guys, welcome to the shop. Last time we were here, uh, we had just finished the AMC 20. So I have, uh, just to get you caught up, I've got it off the bench and back under the frame. While I've been waiting on parts for the uh, Dana 30, went ahead and, uh, and got the uh, two and a half inch suspension lift installed. I got the skid plate under it, the gas tank is in it. I've got some new stainless steel gas lines um, to run. I've got to clean up the, the brake lines I had already replaced, so I'm not gonna replace them again. I'm just gonna clean them up and uh, get those back on it. Went ahead and put a, a heavy duty uh, steering box mount on it. It's a lot beefier than the original three piece that was under there. So I think that'll work out pretty well. While I was waiting on parts for the Dana 30, I had started some work here on the, uh, on the body tub. So I've got that panel completely cut out, fitted, ready, ready to uh, burn in. I had started on this transition waterfall panel right there. But I think what they had sent me was the wrong panel. Um, this one didn't fit in there very well at all. It didn't see how this has this little notch right here. That one doesn't have it at all in it. And then right this area here, where you can see this has kind of got a triangle shape right in here. That one didn't have it. So I don't know if that was for a uh, CJ7 or a different body maybe they made with the CJ5s, I don't know. All I know is it didn't work with mine. Uh, so I ordered another one and uh, it fits perfectly in there. So it's, I've got it screwed in now, just waiting to, uh, to burn that in as well. I think before I do anything, I wanna get it set on top of the frame just so I can make sure that these body mount holes uh, match up. And this bracket here has been replaced as well, or being replaced. I just want to make sure that it, that's not going to be an issue. And then these uh, nuts here are for the row bar. So I'm thinking I either need to make a template to make sure that that bolts up well to the row bar or I need to set the row bar in just to make sure that those are going to work. But anyway, that's what I've been doing while I've been waiting. This panel wasn't a perfect fit. This area right here was, I don't know, it was quite different than what it needed to be. So I've cut that out and I'm in the process of, of rebuilding that area right there. So, uh, but anyway, that's what I've been doing. So I've gotten all the parts in for the Dana 30 now. Uh, I don't know why, but this baffle uh, did not come in the kit with the bearings and, and the, uh, the master kit there. Neither did the oil slinger here. So I've cleaned that up. I'm going to reuse it. This just came in. So we'll use it. Got the uh, Auburn locker ready to go in. New ring and pinion gears ready to go in. We'll get that set up, hopefully, and uh, get it into the, the Dana 30. The Dana 30's been cleaned. Uh, I pour 15 it. I've painted uh, chassis black on the outside of it. I went and put the uh, internal frame coating on the inside of the tubes. So, um, I believe it is ready to go. So, uh, let's see where we get. We'll, uh, we'll see if we can get these pinion gears, um, set up on this thing. See if we can get this Dana 30 back together and underneath the, the frame. Be a lot easier to move it around and get the tub on it so I can, uh, make some better progress. Anyway, stay with me and, uh, Let's see how far we get. So let's get started with this. We'll get this ring gear on first. 
So uh, first thing we'll do is put it in the oven. Um, we'll stick it in this oven and let that warm up. We're going to go uh, 300 for about 20 minutes. Let that do its thing while we're waiting. Um, this actuator will pull off very carefully. And then this little roller bearing will come off as well. So we'll just set that right there. All right, while we're waiting on that ring gear to warm up, Let's go ahead and press the um, these seals into the inner axle tube. Right, guys, so uh, let's see if we can get these bear, uh, seals pressed in. So I've got this, uh, I don't know if you'd call that an insertion tool. It's been a while since I've it's been sitting around for a while. That kind of wound up there. All right, that looks pretty good. So let's see if we can get it pushed in. Just a hair more and I think we'll have it. This other one right quick. Those look good. Let me check the timer. Let me check the timer on the uh, the ring gear. All right, we got 13 more minutes. So while we're waiting, let's go ahead and press in. Go ahead and press in this race.
there is the outer pinion race. All right, let's get that ring gear out of there and uh, see if we can get it bolted in. Tell you what, before we do that, let's at least get a couple of these. if we can get that gear to fit on there. Let me grab a socket and we'll just snug that up for now. Okay. All right. Let me grab the manual. We'll see what the torque setting is for a 3 8 bolt. So I can't remember. go from there. Alright, looks like uh, 50 foot-pounds. So let me uh, let me move over to the vise. So I've got it set up in the uh, in the vise, I went through and numbered all these bolts in the order that I want to torque them. I'm going to set the torque wrench to 50 foot-pounds. Alright. And we'll start right here. Alright, very good. So now let's get this back over to the bench. Uh, the one thing different from the AMC and the Dana is uh, on the AMC they put the shims on the outside of the bearings. On the, 
the Dana, they want them on the inside. So, uh, so what I've done is gone and ground out the inside of these, both, uh, both sides of the, the carrier. And the inside, the inner bearing for the pinion, I've got it uh, ready to go as well, as well as made a nut for uh, torquing. So uh, next up, let's get this pushed aside for a sec. ahead and get this pinion set up. So the first thing that goes on is this oil slinger. Press on the, the bearing for this. So what we're going to do is set this up in the press so we can press this guy on. What I've done is this is the old one that came off of the old, the old pinion. And I've hogged out the inside of it to make it fit over the shaft. And we'll use it to press that guy on. The thing you want to be careful for is getting anything on this, on these bearings and that uh, those uh, that cage there for the bearings. Don't want to put any pressure on it. So we'll check that as we press that on. So let me uh, let me get set up at the press. And we'll go ahead and get that on there. So what we have is uh, a, well, so down here we've got the bearing we're trying to press on, our oil slinger, and our setup race. So on top of it, I've just put a socket to uh, help with uh, hopefully keep from damaging that gear. So let's get that pressed on, see what happens. All right. Let's There it is. All right, we'll get this back over to the bench and we'll look at the next. All right, the original setup had the baffle and 30 thousandths in shims. So uh, there's the baffle. And there is 30 thousands in shims. And then we put the setup race in. And then we'll drop the pinion. All right, 
let me get the uh, bearing on the other side and the uh, setup nut and then we'll drop the uh, locker in there and start getting it set up so. all right guys so I put the bearing in the yoke the washer and the setup nut and I've uh, torqued it down so that I've got uh, 15 inch pounds of rotational force so that's good for uh, setup so the next step we'll get the differential uh, carrier put in and we'll uh, try to get those shims set up so originally on the ring side it had uh, 45 thousandths shim and on the non-ring side it had 58 thousandths so I started out with that first I did put the 30 here uh, on the pinion so We'll have to see if that works out or not. I think it should, but uh, we'll find out. But I started out uh, 45, uh, 58. Did not work at all for me. I couldn't, it was way too tight. So I ended up going 30 on the ring side and 20 on the non-ring side. So uh, I've got everything in there. Backlash is right at seven. So uh, I'm gonna paint the gears, run a pattern, see what kind of pattern we have. And uh, all right, guys. So I have ran a pattern; it didn't work out. I've moved shims around. Uh, finally, got it to uh, what I think is going to be an acceptable uh, pattern for this. There's the drive side in the middle. It doesn't bottom all the way out. Got a little line at the top, mostly centered. Then the uh, coast side is there, if you can see that. So, uh, yeah, so I think I'll be happy with that. Next step, um, we'll pull all of that out, clean it up real good. I think I'm going to use this vent hole here to uh, bring the electrical out for the locker. And then I'll relocate that vent hole over to the other side. So I'll get set up and do that. And then uh, we'll reinstall everything permanently, get the new bearings pressed on to the, to the locker and uh, do some final checks and call it good, hopefully. So uh, stay with me.
there's the access for the uh, locker wires, and there's that uh, vent relocated. So uh, let me clean this up. Alright, so let's see if we can get this pinion set up now. So we'll uh, push the pinion in. Got about the same shim stack as I had originally. So we'll try that first. Then I'll push the outer bearing on. We'll hold off on the seal. Go ahead and put the yoke on. Put the uh, setup nut. Torque wrench, we're going to set the torque wrench for 185. Alright, and that's already getting too tight, so we'll loosen this off and add a little more. Alright guys, we were in the middle of uh, setting preload on these bearings when the GoPro died, so I'm not exactly sure how much of that you got, but uh, I think we've got the, the correct shims in here now, so we're going to go ahead and press the uh, slinger in, and then I'll get the seal, and we'll put the yoke back on and the pinion will be set ready to go, so uh, give me just a second. I'll try to set you up so you can see, but uh, you may not be able to. All right, guys, there it is. So I got the, uh, I put the oil slinger in, then I put the seal, yoke, washer, new nut. Got it torqued to 185 foot-pounds, which gives us 14 pa uh, inch-pounds of rotational force on that nut. So uh, I think we're good to go there. It'll get a little looser as it seats in there a little bit but yeah that looks good so let's get the bearings pressed on to the the uh, the carrier of the locker and then we'll uh, get it dropped in and get our final readings all right guys let me show you what I have I've got the shims that we've already uh, set our backlash with here's the new bear and I'm, I'll check it as I press it just to make sure we're not putting any uh, pressure on that race and then I've got an old setup uh, bearing race there with a uh, little spacer above it. So uh, let me set you up and uh, get this pressed on. And then we'll go from there. All right, let's go back to the bench and we'll uh, see if we can drop this into the housing. All right, guys, there it is in the, in the housing. It's tight. It's 
still got our backlash. I'm going to twist these wires. Turn it. And I'll push it through this access port right there. In the pack, you've got. Um, these two to lock this in just depends on whichever one um, you feel like works best for you I think it's going to be this one Just let me find the we got our double dots so the double dots I think this will work right there yeah think maybe Single dot at the top. Just snug these down. Backlash. All right, guys. So I've got the uh, the uh, locker back into the housing, and uh, I've run another pattern. Um, this is the drive side. Looks better than it was the first time. And then, uh, let me see if I can get you the coast side. There's the coast side. So with that, I am very happy. So I will, uh, I'm gonna leave it there. Last thing I'll do is put the housing uh, cover on it. I think I'll go ahead and pour a quart of uh, lubricant and the uh, the additive in there with it. I think I've actually got two, yeah. I'll go ahead and pour two in there and 
just so I can keep those gears lubricated. And then next time we'll get the axles pushed in, we'll get the brakes installed, the hubs installed, and then uh, hopefully uh, get this thing back under the Jeep. All right, guys, there it is. Got the cover on it. Got the uh, ID tag back on it. Everything is sealed up. I've got some uh, grease in there. Just checking to see if I have any leaks. I don't have it filled yet. We'll wait till we get it back under the Jeep and we'll, uh, we'll check that. Next up will be uh, getting those axles in, getting the uh, yokes back on, getting the hubs back on it, the brakes on it, getting it back under the Jeep. But uh, I think we'll end it right there this time. Anyway, thanks for coming by the shop and uh, we'll see you next time.